All right, here we go. Let's get this started then. We're good. Yeah, oh, nice. I like seeing that straight line. K-Bob, what is going on? Let's do this. Let's get this show started, finally. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we have been working all day, and now it's after work. I'm Joe, and we're back. Another episode of the After Work Show every week, sometimes twice a week like this week, and I think we did it last week. I can't remember anymore. No, we did one last week. Anyway, we bring to you here on twitch.tv slash joeafterwork live in a streaming format, Nintendo news every week, and then we upload it at some point to youtube.com slash joeafterwork where you can find the breakout videos there. You can also find them here as well. And now with the power of vodcasting, I can give you guys replayability. So if you miss any of it, um, I'll replay this episode once the stream is over so that way in case you guys missed anything it'll replay then and i'll do it again tomorrow morning as well along with some other videos that i'll throw up uh everything that i vodcasted earlier today was from um the weekend stream so i think i'm gonna try to do that more i'm gonna stick to one day where it's just vodcast and then maybe a couple mornings where there are like some shorter ones as well god damn l1 thank you for them bits they're flying everywhere ow i just got hit by one of my nose ow <laughs> Oh my goodness. But anyway, guys, this is our E3 prediction show. Um, there's no real true format that I have for tonight's show other than to give you some of my thoughts of what we might see this year. Uh, I'm going to make some wild predictions as well. Just to have some fun with it. You got to. You got you to take things a little lightheartedly sometimes as well. So there's that. And before we get into the E3 predictions, there was a bit of news that broke out moments after i ended the stream last week i think that was wednesday and that was in the form of this little bit right here so we're gonna go into the pipeline just for a little bit just for a little bit burp, burp, burp. we're gonna talk about some news and then we'll go into the e3 predictions but guys nintendo switch online program finally getting some more information by way of nintendo directly see what i did there and they gave us they gave us prices they gave us prices and i gotta say i am i i'm taken aback i am definitely taken aback this is this is this is some good news um there's some good news and then there's you know the whole thing with the splatoon chat headset con abomination thing yeah let's just not talk about that right now <laughs> Gunslinger, what's up? Venom, what's up? Ryan, L1, thank you again for the bits. Dropping zero down to 25. But here we go. Let's uh, let's try to zoom in here if we can. Computer, will you let me zoom in? No? All right, that's fine. I can read it from here. So here we go. Coming in 2018 now. So it seems like it's been pushed back. Um, this paid service... Let's Nintendo Switch owners enjoy online multiplayer gaming as well as dedicated smartphone app, a dedicated smartphone app that connects to your Nintendo Switch system and allows you to connect with your friends online play, for online play sessions. Okay, straightforward stuff. Uh, we've read some of this before, so let's see. After free trial period, most games will require a paid online service subscription from Nintendo in order to play online. Goddamn, L1! dropping them down god damn thank you sir. oh my goodness you're trying to kill zero he's got five hp left um this service is only for nintendo switch it does not affect any so it doesn't affect wii u3 yes we've gone through that already where is here we go so we got a bit more information on the games going on right now damn oh l1 hit him with the bits dude thank you thank you sir oh my god much appreciated and uh, the l1 is once again reclaimed his throne as bit boss oh my god this is gonna be a bit warfare isn't it see what i did there call of duty reference anyone okay bob dude thank you <laughs> what is happening this is war zone over my head already this is insane um, classic game selection. Subscribers will get to download co a compilation of classic titles with added online plays such as Super Mario Bros. 3, Balloon Fight, and Dr. Mario. So, right here, this is telling me we might not be getting any, uh, Super Nintendo 
games from this right off the bat. I think this might, and this is going to lead to some of my E3 predictions down the road, but um, this might mean, for the moment, we're only going to get NES titles in this thing, in this whole, in with um, this uh, classic game selection by way of the uh, Nintendo uh, online service program. So you get, <clears throat> and a, a change that they did make, remember uh, a few months back, back in January, February, before the Switch actually came out, um, they had mentioned that the games would only be available for that month. Uh, and then after that, it's that new game comes out, boom, you won't be able to play the old game, uh, the, the previous selection. With what's happening now is you get, Download the games, you have them in your library, and sort of similar to the PlayStation Network, as long as you have the service, um, you're paying for the subscription service, you'll have those games playable in your library for free, no additional charge, um, other than by way of the subscription fee. So, going down, moving to prices, you got $3.99 for your one month, $7.99 for your three month membership, and for a full year, $19.99. US dollars. This is crazy. This is nuts. This is <laughs> I uh, I just really I was taken back at how low they're going with prices on on the I honestly thought they were going to be closer to like 30 40 bucks maybe um and you know offering their online service. I have no idea if this is clearly they have to, uh, they have to be competing against you know PlayStation, and Xbox in terms of online service programs. But the, man, I I just I didn't expect it to be this low. And I guess you know they probably thought about in terms of servers and whatnot. This is how much they can afford to you know give us the price for. So I'm sure they have thought about it somehow, and they are still making some sort of profit off of this. Good for them. I'm just I'm still taken back at how low these prices are. I mean, twenty bucks for a full year that's that's an easy one for me uh, personally. I'm just like, okay, yep, that's that's I'm doing the year. I'm doing the year, and I'm gonna be good. And the fact that you're gonna be getting NES titles that are also going to be online um, enabled, like they're giving you games in this service from NES titles that are you're going to be able to play with other people online which is awesome. So uh, for instance, they're giving the examples here, two player game all two player games, Balloon Fight, Super Mario 3, um and Dr. Mario all two player games that they're going to enable somehow fix it up to be able to play with someone online, which is really really dope. Um I think this is going to be their way of sneaking in virtual console games. I don't think they're going to go right off the bat um e3 and say like hey virtual console here's all the games from your wii u from your 3ds i think they're gonna slowly trickle it out i don't think they want to confuse people and flood it up as <clears throat> your classic console gaming market even though there's a bunch of people that would love to have that on the go myself included i would love to have that play my super metroid on my switch and be fine with it um i can play it on my 3ds xl the new one you can't play it on the older one but i i'm i'm done <laughs> i want to be done with my 3ds at this point i really do <laughs> i'm not going to talk about this again but um here we go here's what's on included in the nintendo switch uh the online services online gameplay online lobby and voice chat app Classic game selection, product name and subject change, um, Nintendo eShop deals. So that's pretty cool. It looks like on top of what you already get from purchasing games to then get the deals for um, through the My Nintendo section on the website, looks like you're going to get additional eShop deals, which is pretty cool. That's very PlayStation, um, uh, PlayStation Plus, Xbox Live-like in terms of getting deals pretty cool um and then both for non-subscribers and online you're getting your 
standard stuff, access to Nintendo Shop, register managed friends, share screenshots to social media, access to Nintendo Switch parental controls app. Um, yeah, there's, I mean, again, a lot of information in this little bit, and I mean, you can't really talk more about what's going on here, but some of this stuff that we're discussing here, I want to talk about more in depth, uh, including a new thing that I hope gets announced later on uh, during E3, but we'll talk about that later on. Um, moving on, there's a couple of games that got announced. <clears throat> L1 was actually, shout out to L1 Metal Gaming for sharing some of these in the chat. Um, I I got, uh, I just got the emails. I get notifications whenever Nintendo uploads videos. So we got three games from Atlas, Shin Megami Tensei, Strange Journey, Redux, Radiant Historia, Perfect Chronology, Chronology and Etrian Odyssey 5, Beyond Myth. All Nintendo 3DS, 2DS games. And uh, one of them I at least know is a remaster. I don't know about these other two because I'm not fully familiar with the Shin Megami Tensei series other than, you know, that there are also Persona games that are out there. So I want to check these out with you guys. We're going to play some of these trailers. I just got to switch over the audio to make sure that you guys can hear it. So that, that would be a thing, right? <clears throat> Oh yeah. And then after we watch these trailers, I'm going to jump back into the chat real quick, catch up with you guys, and then we'll start talking, um, we'll start talking E3 predictions. HP shields up. L1, take care, dude. Thank you for the bits again. I love you, man. もはや話し合いなどで解決はしないぞ。俺が悪魔を使って戦うんだ。What is that? What was that? What the hell was that giant beast? Jeez. These games, man. These games. Straight up anime. Um, oh, wow. They're already suggesting us to the next game that we're going to jump into. Which is... Radiant Historia Perfect Chronology, which is a DS title that's being remastered for 3DS. So let's check this out. Oh, we're getting a song. Thank you. Oh. So beautiful. Copyright strikes galore right now. <laughs> Just Japan letting giant monsters fight with giant robots. Jeez. I love how all these games have... Atlas does a really good job giving it like that anime feel to their games. I really like Dragon Crown is one of my favorite Atlas games. Played that the hell out of that on my Vita. Got it for free on my PS3 from when I had PlayStation Plus. Still have PlayStation Plus. Hmm. Damn. They went in on that one. It's like. You know what? We don't have to wait for E3. Let's just drop these. Boom. Here you go. Here, here you go. Thank you, Atlas. Thank you. So, Radiant Historia Prophet Chronology is a remastered version of Radiant Historia on the DS. It's an RPG. And they also um, added 
some additional things in this version of the game that's got like a, a sub story or something like that sub story mode that they're adding into this which uh is pretty cool you're getting a an older game with some new content, which is pretty dope. So that's Perfect Historia, and moving on quickly to Etrian Odyssey 5 Beyond the Myth. So let's check this out. Another Atlas title. Did my... Yep, that just froze up. All right. Let me... Let me do this. Refresh. Boom. Haven't had to do that this week. <laughs> so that was... Ex we were due for a refresh. There we go. <clears throat> This is the story of Yggdrasil Talk and the to land me. Talk of Arcania. Children of men passed down an ancient fable. The power of the gods will be granted there. Disciples of magic study and archaic myth. The great mysteries shall be answered there. Descendants of warriors recite their folklore. The ultimate techniques can be mastered there. Nomads of the plains exchange a fairy tale. The lost treasures must be slumbering there. From all across the land of Arcania, each culture pursues its own legends. They journey to Yggdrasil, yearning to reach the top and meet their destinies. Mortals who dare climb the fabled Yggdrasil. Are you mere wanderers lost in the labyrinth? Or true adventurers in pursuit of its legends. What the? The okay. weight of the world is on your shoulders. It now falls on you to protect wow. this planet. Wow, that is very old school. Etrian Odyssey 5. That battle layout. Beyond the myth. Fall 2017. Etrian 5. Okay. The other thing I forgot to mention about that um that last title was there's a ti a whole huge time travel aspect to that game which really caught my caught my eye. I wanted to play it when I had my DS. I just never got around to it. So this is perfect. This is perfect. We're coming full circle. Um Etrian Odyssey. That it seems like it's got some old school J uh JRPG touches. That like front like view of the battlefield where you don't see your characters you're but you're battling you see the enemies on screen that is very very old school it's like whoa ooh, i haven't seen that since uh we played um dragon seventh dragon code uh a while back a little bit of it and it had it had that in there but um i, I like seeing some of those old school old school jrpg battle layouts pretty dope so those were the three trailers we're leaving Trailer City. I'm jumping into the chat before we get started with our E3 predictions for Nintendo Spotlight. Let's go. How you guys doing? I'm grabbing the wrong mouse. There we go. Let's do this. Let's let's do this. Damn, we got we got people up in here. I want to get again. Thank you everybody that um, dropped some bits. L1 K Bob K Bob. I saw you earlier. Um, I jumped in when I got home from work, and I was looking at how the vodcast was doing, and I noticed everybody, everybody that jumped into the vodcast was like, yo, what up? Hey, can anyone see this comment? What is going on? What chat? I don't see a chat. There's no one talking but me. Oh, it says replay on the title. Never mind. I felt so bad. I was like, oh, man, I thought I made it obvious that it was a vodcast. I don't know how else to make it obvious. Um, I think what I'll do is I'll make schedules for the vodcasts and I'll post them up on the channel. So that way, when you guys scroll down and you see what's going on in the schedules, you'll know at least when I'll be vodcasting versus when I'm streaming just to kind of clear that up a little bit. But I also noticed that they throw up a big giant, uh, which is really, really handy now because they didn't do that at first. Um, and it's only been a few days, but they throw up like on the upper right hand corner. It says VOD cast on the stream. So that way, you know, it's a replay. Um, so I, <laughs> I apologize if I confuse anybody when I started a stream at like 10 o'clock in the morning this morning. Um, seven o'clock in the morning for some of you guys. <laughs> oh my goodness. And there was someone else that dropped bit and bits during the stream. And I can't remember now. Ah, I feel, I feel terrible. I even confused Bobo chat. Bobo chat jumped in. He's like, oh damn, I'm catching these VODs. Everyone's catching me off guard. Oh man. Fortnite is Ryan, K-Bob, Gunslinger. What is going on? 
dead eye in lurk mode. I see you. I see you there, dead eye. What up? Oh man. Venom, what's going on? You still up in here? Feels bad, man. No, don't feel bad. <laughs> Rack them up, stack them up. No. Oh my goodness. Still waiting on Team Ico for <laughs> Shadow of the Colossus 2. <laughs> 10 years on the clock. 12 years on the clock. Oh my goodness. Let's see, let's see, let's see. But you guys, any interest in those trailers that we just watched or any comments, concerns, questions on the Nintendo online service program before we jump into E3 predictions? I'm just scrolling down to chat, seeing if I missed anything. <laughs> the bad news is that Nintendo needs to produce more Switches. Jeez, everyone's going wild. Yeah, and they already and they had also announced again that they're trying to produce more Switches too. Uh, this was recently. On um, not talking about like the a couple months ago where they were trying to double uh, double up production. <clears throat> so, I think we talked about this last week. I'm. I don't know why I'm. Am I lose? Why am I losing my voice? I just got over being sick. I don't understand. Anyway, um. Last week we were talking about this, Ryan, actually, the Nintendo Summer of Play, and what we were, um, what we were talking about was they're going to be able to purchase 2DS XLs once it's available during Summer of Play, so like halfway in. I don't know if you'll be able to pre-order it and have it shipped to your house before then, but Summer of Play is starting, I think, this week, if I'm not mistaken, this weekend at Ir in Irvine, California, Irving, California? I, I think it's either this week or next week, but <clears throat> excuse me, but that would lead me to le believe that you would also probably be able to pick up a Nintendo switch there for sure. Um, it, it just, it makes sense. If you're going to sell the 2DS XLs there, sell the Nintendo switches there as well. Um, and then, you know, the thing with retailers getting them in is they're getting them in so quickly they're getting them in and then like not enough people know ahead of time and then by the time you get there they're gone or some stores will just get like one or two and then that's it <laughs> it's like oh come on um over here in new york city it's sort of the same thing but a lot of people what a lot of people don't know is nintendo new york um the nintendo store usually has a pretty good stock of them daily so if you go even like you know mid-afternoon you still might have a chance of being able to get a nintendo switch just because they heavily stock that place with them so for anyone that's in the city or nearby new york take a visit there try there um odds are you might actually be able to pull off getting one <laughs> It's like nuking some bits on warfare. I know I was like in the trenches. <gasps> oh man. But thank you again for everybody dropping them bits. I appreciate y'all. I really think it'll get delayed even longer considering Nintendo likes to take their time. Oh, what did I, um, Oh, about the Nintendo, the Nintendo online service program. Yeah. And I think they stayed safe saying, coming in 2018 so they're not giving an exact date my guess this is another this, this isn't an e3 prediction but my guess is that it'll be released in tandem with smash brothers uh, uh smash brothers port i think that's when they'll finally launch it that's that's a guess that's a guess it's not a prediction <laughs> or I guess a prediction is a guess, but th this one doesn't count towards my E3. Oh, man. Oh, yeah. Let's see. Let's see. Black and white food. Yeah. What? <laughs> Ryan, what you talking about? 3DS is never over. It's going to keep going to the end. I know. And I know. I know it's going to keep going. Just... <laughs> Just kill it off for me, Nintendo. Please, please. I don't want to spend any more money on it. Oh, man. Japanese game, games time for Joe to play it. Oh, no. <clears throat> no, not a sore throat. I just keep having to clear my throat. Like that song, that one song.
Yeah, I didn't see it until like five minutes in on oh, no, K-pop. Oh man, you need to highlight it. What? Hunter, what's up? All right, guys. So I think people are wild, like different. What? Oh boy, <laughs> I have no idea what happened there. But guys, let's jump into some E three stuff, right? And uh, I just want to take a minute here to thank everybody that's hosting tonight. 1G Game Cave, Ariel Draco, True Pretty Tony, Jamily Dickinson. Thank you guys for the hosts. We have 10 people up in here. And we have some new followers as well. So thank you, everybody that's following. I know it didn't update up there. And that's because I didn't update my... I didn't open up Streamlabs before I started streaming. That would have been nice. That should update in a minute. But we got three new followers. And I'm going to see if I could find them here real quick. Boom. Boom, boom. This should help. Yes. RS2X Slicer, Sunny DQ, and Kira Chiki. Thank you guys for the follows. Welcome to the After Work crew. You guys are very much appreciated. I love y'all. Show them some love, even though they are not here today. They're with us in spirit or watching in a playback. E3 is like a king, king, gaming convention or something. Yes, E3 happens once a year. It is... Um, it. So basically... This is the first time that it's really open to the public like this. Um, it's basically meant for retailers to come in, see what games are coming out, what they want. Like, it's it's really meant for them for, you know, preparation for, like, the fall season and getting, you know, looking at what's coming out and seeing what they want to sell in their stores. But um, this year, it's being opened up to, like, 1,500 people. Um I was one of those people that was able to buy a ticket. Uh, they actually took a while to sell out, so I was actually surprised that it didn't sell out quicker. Um, I think the price tag on the ticket was a little crazy, but I figured this might be the one and only time I will be able to go. I am not going to pay to go to one next year unless the ticket prices are lower, but, um, but I had to do it at least once experience it get it out of my system this is like this is like a childhood dream <laughs> to like go there and experience things that aren't going to be coming out for a couple of months maybe a year who knows but um i i i the more and more i keep thinking about it the more and more like ooh, i get to play some mario odyssey okay I get to play some more uh, some Mario Odyssey. Let's do this. Now I get to play Pokemon Tournament over there. If I even get a chance to play any of these games, because I'm going to have to wait on lines for forever. And I got to take off these headphones because I have no music playing. There's nothing playing in the background. Oh, my goodness. His inner baby Joe is happy now. I know. <laughs> High five, 10 year old me. <laughs> oh, man. Now I want to go there, but I'm going to Florida. Hey, man, Florida is good. You got Universal Studios. You got Disney World. The best, the best iteration of Disney that you will ever experience in life. Suck it, Disneyland. I don't want any of that business up in here. It's all about Disney World. <laughs> um, you got your water parks there. Dude, you're going to have a fun time in Florida. Enjoy that. Enjoy that. Enjoy it. All right. So with that said and done, let's jump in to some E3 predictions. So let me pull up my notes here. JoJo's got to pull up his notes. Oh, no, he's cheating. No, I'm just being prepared, guys. That's all, that's all I'm trying to do. Just trying to be prepared. So here we go. We're going to talk about some Nintendo E3 predictions and uh, what I think we'll be seeing out of this. Now, I want to give you guys some backstory to some of the stuff that we've already seen this year. So, uh, part of, this is going to play into part of my predictions. Um, we're going to throw in some softballs, some pretty obvious ones. I'm going to throw out some outrageous ones. And I'm going to throw out some ones that, hey, this could actually happen at E3. So, we're going to we're gonna have them ranging around, uh, along the entire spectrum of the Afterworks scale. And uh, in order to do that, got to give you guys some history of this year. So, February 28th, we had a Nintendo Nindies Direct, where Nintendo 
kind of just spewed out a bunch of independent game indie game titles that we that some of them have come out most of them didn't even get release dates so i think we're going to get a lot of these release dates but let me just run down the list of those games that were part of that nintendo nindies direct and uh we'll we'll see what's been out and what hasn't been released yet and what hasn't been given a release date uh, what has what has release dates so far on this list? So, Steam World Dig Two, Ukulele Overcooked Special Edition, The Escapist Two, Goner, Dandada, Kingdom Two Crowns, Runner Three, Blaster Master Zero, Flipping Death, Graceful Explosion Machine, Mister Shifty Tumble Seed, Shakedown Hawaii, Pocket Rumble, War Groove, Ooh, and Stardew Valley. So, out of this list, four of these games have come out to Nintendo Switch. That's four. That's three. That's four. <laughs> Blast Master Zero, Graceful Explosion Machine, Mr. Shifty, and Tumble Seed. Those games came out out of this list. Um, out of everything else that's left on this list, I believe one only one of these games actually has a release date. That's Goner. That comes out tomorrow, actually. And from there, that leaves us with Steam World Dig 2, Ukulele, Overcooked Special Edition, The Escapist, Don Dada. Kingdom, Two Crowns, Runner 3, Flipping Death, Shakedown Hawaii, Pocket Rumble, Wargroove, and Stardew Valley. I don't think Stardew Valley got a Nintendo Switch release date. I think it's just been announced for Nintendo Switch still. I could be wrong about that, but uh, someone someone wants to correct me on the chat about Stardew Valley. More more than happy to check that out. So I think we'll get release dates of what's uh what's to be seen from uh these uh, i i think we'll get release dates on all these nindy titles um at least most of them at this point i mean i feel like some of these games are are have to be ready to go um also brain farts so also this actually I found out about a couple hours ago, which it's not confirmed, but I, I'd i believe it. I'd believe Nintendo would actually try this out. Something different is a very short presentation to be had, which uh, what's being indicated right now is that 9 a.m. to 9.30 is going to be the Nintendo Direct, which is going to be their presentation for E3. That would be pretty dope. Because that means we're not going to be sitting around for two hours watching fireworks go off. Um, <clears throat> uh, you know, orchestras playing music in front of video games and such. I think they're just going to hammer it out. Sort of like what we saw in the last Nintendo Direct. Where they had like the calendar format of like going through everything that's coming out for 3DS. And then switching over. Ha. Huh? to Nintendo Switch and showing the games that are coming out for them. I think that'll probably be in that similar format. So if that's the case, I believe the 30 minute format of um, this presentation that's gonna be happening next Tuesday, that's 9 a.m. Pacific time. So 12 o'clock for us here on the East Coast, but I'll be out on West Coast at that time. Um, I don't think there's gonna be any in-depth gameplay if it's going to be that short of a stream. Uh, they're, they have Nintendo Treehouse Lives planned throughout the entire uh, week. That month, that what is that? Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. That E3 is. So there's that. They're gonna save all the gameplay for the Treehouse Lives. Uh, plus we got the tournaments for Arms for Splatoon 2, uh, and I think Pokémon Tournament's gonna have some sort of tournament there. That two word. I don't. I don't know another word for tournament but i think that's supposed to be happening there too um don't think we're gonna get any additional pokemon info i looked back i tried searching and trying to see if there was any information that's been delved out during e3 pokemon related and i couldn't find anything so i i'm gonna lean towards we're not getting any additional info for like a nintendo switch version of a pokemon game of some sort i think we're just gonna have to nip it in the butt take our salt and you know eat it with our whatever preferred drink is <laughs> and 
this last one, I actually on the fence on, so I won't say anything just yet on this, but it's Legend of Zelda related, so here we go. I um, think we're going to get release dates for Fire Emblem Warriors, Mario Odyssey, Sonic Forces, some of the bigger titles that Nintendo's been kind of pushing forward with, uh, especially with Mario Odyssey getting a full-on demo at E3 on the show floor. Uh, people are going to be able to play the game, which is pretty dope. I think we'll get. I think it's safe to say we'll get release dates for that game. Uh, my guess is it's going to be a November title. I think that's what they're going to close out the year with. That's going to be the holiday game that they showcase for the Nintendo Switch, and I think it's going to be their way of showing how HD Rumble should work on the Joy Cons, um, motion controls for there. I, I think they're going to go all out with this um, with it with this title. And it'll be it'll be their way of being able to sell even more Switches. I think that's probably where we're going to get th the most amount of Nintendo Switches outside of this summer with ARMS and Splatoon coming out. Um, we might have a lull in between that before, the f before, you know, our fall games come out. So my guess, November, I'm going to say November 17th. I think Nintendo's ballsy enough to pair this up with Pokemon coming out the same day. <laughs> because after that, Thanksgiving's the next week, Black Friday's that follows, and then my birthday afterwards. Um, just just throwing that out there. So I, I don't think you're going to... Nintendo doesn't care about competing with the Call of Duties, the Battlefields, and all that stuff. They're just going to drop their titles when they choose to do so. So I'm calling it November 17th, release date for Mario Odyssey. Um, if if not November 17th, it's got to be a November title. I was looking at all the release games for, like, nin for games that Nintendo is making, and we have ARMS. They, it basically, it comes down to they've been releasing one big title a month, so we had Breath of the Wild at launch in March. We had Mario Kart 8 in April. Uh, we took a break in May because Fire Emblem, F Fire Emblem, Fire Emblem Echoes came out on the 3DS. So I don't think they wanted to compete with having a Switch title then. So Arms is coming out June. Then we got Splatoon in July. Now we don't have anything in August. But Pokemon Tournament DX coming out in September. So, and then again, nothing in August. And I'm guessing Mario Odyssey November. So, we have a break in between August and then we have another break in October. Two perfect slots for games coming out. Now, history says Hyrule Warriors came out in August 2014th. Uh, I think it was the 14th could be possible that we get a release date for fire emblem warriors for august but considering that they did say it was going to be a fall title i'm leaning towards the october slot so i think october we're going to get fire emblem warriors i don't have a date in mind probably mid-october or something like that if if Pokemon tournament is coming out towards the end of september then i'd say mid to late october is going to be Fire Emblem Warriors, I think that might be the sweet spot, so that way it gives people time to play Pokken, play their Pokemon Gold and Silver, and play, um, actually, no, uh, Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon don't come out until November anyway, so yeah, the Pokemon games there. Po say Pokemon for September, Fire Emblem Warriors for October, give you something in between to whet your appetite prior to Mario Odyssey coming out. And then um, Sonic Forces probably another big title I, I was like looking through the list i was like what who, who are other third-party developers that work very closely with nintendo um you got you got nt creates working on stuff they've already announced their mighty gunvolt burst their um azure striker gunvolt uh striker pack that's going to be coming out in august as well so yeah it's not that we don't have games coming out in august we just don't have a nintendo uh developed game coming out in august so i think we take the break in August, let all the indie games come out July and August, and then back to having Nintendo games come out once a month, September, October, November, boom, done. Oh yeah, we we'll just take a minute here to check out what's going on in chat.
There's there's a lot of madness right now. What is happening? <laughs> Never been to Disney. Now's your chance. Make your dreams come true. Don't let your dreams be dreams. Just do it. <laughs> oh my goodness, Ryan, what are you what are you doing? What are you doing? Ryan, you crazy. Fire Emblem Warriors is going to be on my birthday. Ooh. Ooh. That's a bold, that's a bold prediction, Ryan. That is a bold prediction. Boom. All right. Just popping my notes back up. Um, another big, I mean, there's some stuff here that we haven't seen since Nintendo originally, like, uh, posted up that picture of uh, all the developers that they're working with for Nintendo Switch, and some of these were in the Nintendo Switch press conference um, back in January. So games like Project Octopath, which is uh, hasn't had we haven't heard a peep since Square Enix mentioned uh, mentioned it one time, and maybe we'll see it reappear at E3. Uh, also, Skyrim, Skyrim was another game. Now we only saw footage of that in that nintendo switch trailer back in november of last year so i think it's time i think they announce it bring it in for a fall title say hey skyrim finally coming out boom be done with it <laughs> uh and then you got your fifas uh there hasn't been any other sports games that have really been announced you have nba playgrounds there's that uh, i guess there's apparently a golf game that's supposed to be coming out that um i i vaguely remember having this conversation with where's barry over twitter over some golf game that was that was supposed to be coming out what else do i have here yeah sonic mania august another one uh, you have games like fate extella coming out uh this month actually oh project mekuru that's another one so project mekuru actually came out in japan already um i do have the japanese version because it also has english translation so it, I should be fine when the game comes out in the U.S. think they'll showcase that. They'll give a release date for that as well. It's a very simple, straightforward game. Um, it, there's not much context to it, but it's a fun little game that I'm sure if you have people around you, I don't know how crazy the online f community will be for this game, but uh, I think it'll be a fun little, like, you know, you play it for like 10, 15 minutes with somebody, over joy cons handheld mode tabletop mode whatever you want to call it um it's a cute game it's a cute game it's fun it, it i i can see battles getting heated but i don't think it'll be anything to write home about uh, i think the game was like five ten bucks or something like that um when converted to jap from japanese yen to u.s dollars uh okay here we go so here comes the fun stuff i want to say we get I had it on here, but looking at what just got delved out, what's, what information did um, get put out here for the Nintendo Switch uh, online program, I had dates and details, had that written, and, um, and then now with this information that we have here, I don't think we're going to get a date per se for this. Um, we might get information, though, on the actual app release date itself, so that and then might, maybe like a little like... Uh, thing that Nintendo likes to do is they throw in these random things that aren't game related and they'll throw like a five minute, uh, like a two, three minute description of how it works and everything like that. I think we'll get some information on that because Splatoon 2 is coming out in July. So it, they'll probably release it around when that game's coming out. I don't think they'll really present it with ARMS. I um, think they'll just let ARMS be its own thing. Uh, let's see. The next one I've got is, so this one is, uh, this one is mobile related animal crossing. We heard they were making an animal crossing mobile game. I think now is better. What better time than at E3 to kind of showcase, Hey, mobile store folks, we had your Miitomos. We had your super Mario run, your fire emblem, uh, heroes, Here's our fourth game. They were supposed to make five by uh, the. They were supposed to make five by the end of their um uh by March. What was what is their financial quarter? 
Q4 of 2016, which was the end of March this year. It's weird how that all works. But they didn't meet that. They still have two games to go. So I think they announced their Animal Crossing mobile game. That's that's going to be for iOS and Android. Uh, release date, TBD. But I think they at least show what they're working on so far. Um, this one's a ballsy one for me. I think they're going to announce more Wii U ports. We've seen all these games being dished out ahead of time these last few weeks for Switch, for 3DS, uh, even, you know, and not just Nintendo, play, uh, uh, games that are coming out for PlayStation, games that are coming out for Xbox have been also being, like, slowly trickled out and such, but I think we're going to get some more Wii U ports. I'm going to be real ballsy and get real specific. Um, games that didn't get enough recognition, like Beautiful 101. That was a fun game. That was great. That was Platinum Games. I, I'm almost positive that was Platinum Games. I'm going to have to look it up now just to make sure, now that I have said it. Beautiful 101. Platinum. <laughs> Oh man, yep, Platinum Games, they made that game, that was a brand new IP on the Wii U, and it was great, but no one really got a Wii U, so I that kind of went under the radar, and it was just upsetting. There's some good games on that console that need to cross over to the Nintendo Switch, and I think Nintendo will do it over time. I don't think they want to flood, like I was saying earlier, I don't think they want to flood the switch with old games or well yeah old games I'll, I'll just say it that way classic games classic titles i think they're gonna trickle it out slowly um beautiful 101 bayonetta and i think we get um, this is this is the this is joe going way off the spectrum right now bayonetta 3 nintendo switch i want it to happen i want it to happen i want there to be a trilogy set available for oh my gosh with amiibo support just like they did with uh bayonetta 1 where if you, you had the bowser amiibo then you get the bowser claw smack oh my god Ugh! please make it happen nintendo please <laughs> don't do this to me um and then i mean i know platinum games has also said they're working on a brand new ip as well um with switch in mind so that's pretty dope maybe we get that in there which would be pretty cool um but yeah i i really want i really want another bayonetta game they're so good they're so good oh my goodness and of course what's what's a nintendo e3 without mentioning metroid i mean uh, come on come on come on come on man come on man oh yeah pat upon cena John Cena! Welcome! Thank you for the follow. You made Link shake it like a salt shaker. Link is wearing red today. Red and green. He's rocking that red and green. Everyone, show Pat upon Cena some love. Thank you for the follow. Um. So yeah, freaking... I, I, now here's Joe going crazy again. Crazy, crazy Uncle Joe making his wild E3 predictions. Listen, we're having... This is where we're having fun here. These are the last two... Uh, last three predictions i have and two of them are right here i think they announce a sequel to metroid prime series but they don't call it metroid prime we had federation force uh metroid prime federation federation force which spoiler alerts three two one it ended in it it ended on a cliffhanger it was meant for more so I think that's going to drop it back into the Prime series, but they call it something else. They don't call it Metroid Prime. They call it Metroid whatever. Um, not Metroid whatever, but you know what I'm saying. <laughs> Metroid whatever. <laughs> so I think that that's... I think that's uh, what, what happens there for Switch. And since we're keeping the 3DS, 2DS line alive, I think we get a 2.5D announcement that hey we're in the works with a 2.5d metroid for the 2ds 3ds more to announce later boom and just bombshell and that'll be the end of the stream that'll be the end going into treehouse live just like what what metroid what 
No! <laughs> everyone on the internet goes crazy. <laughs> everyone rejoices, being very, very happy that they'll end up being a Metroid game coming out on a Nintendo console. We're due for one. We are due for one, Nintendo. <laughs> Don't leave us hanging like you did with the Wii U. <laughs> Just saying. And uh, my last prediction for E3 2017 is... Um, I have here, insert wacky Nintendo ex accessory <laughs> mid-conference. I think they're just going to drop it. NES, SNES Classic. I think they're going to do it. I, the, the rumors are... They're so good to be true, but at the same time, it makes sense. They stopped production of the NES uh, Classic abruptly um, around the, a month after the Nintendo Switch came out. So... And they're two wildly different consoles... I think they're going to continue this classic lineup and they go with SNES Classic. And it's, you know, they have their small little Super Nintendo shaped thing. And then they have the Japanese Super Famicom version as well for Japan. Everyone's going to go crazy. That'll come out. That'll be another holiday item that nobody can get. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I think that's what they also throw in. And they'll just drop that in like midway into the, into the direct. So that is... My E3 predictions for the Nintendo Spotlight 2017. I know I'm going to be wrong on like half of these, if not all of them. <laughs> but hey, we do it for fun. Uh, I'll, I'll, when, when we're doing the stream, we'll see, we'll, I'll have this list here and I will see how many of these I actually got right down to like the dates. That'll, uh, I think that'll be pretty fun to go back on, but I want to jump back into the chat here, see what's going on. Ooh, yeah. Uh, Patapontina, I'm going to ask politely, please stop spamming links. <laughs> please. Um, here we go. So I'm going to scroll up here. Let's see what's going on. All right. Not too much since I caught up last. Monster Hunter Double Cross, August 25th as well. But that's only Japan, Ryan. That is not uh, the U.S. So if we're focusing on U.S. consumers, then um, they they might mention, hey, Monster Hunter Double Cross, no release date announced um i was listening to nintendo voice chat it's a nintendo podcast uh um that's like every friday i think thursday fridays usually and they they made mention of the trend of monster hunter games where um normally the u.s will get a monster hunter game six months roughly after it's come out to, in japan so if it's if this is gonna come out in August, we're probably see, gonna see like a March release date, 2018 for Monster Hunter Double Cross. But I don't think they'll announce it during e during E3's Nintendo Direct. I think they'll hold off. I think they'll save that for another Direct in the future. If there's anything that Nintendo likes to do, is they'll save one or two games that they're working on a year ahead of time uh, in their e3 directs or even their uh some of their directs in general if they really want to drop a bombshell um but e3 specifically if we're talking um they like to showcase one or one or two games usually just one big game and that'll be the one that's like hey this is out in the future but here's everything else that is in the present. I Mr. Maximus, I knew you'd come. Thank you for the host, dude. Welcome to the stream. Welcome. How's it going? We're just talking E3 predictions for Nintendo Spotlight 2017. Um, we, we're just, uh, we're not wrapping up just yet, but wrapping up the predictions portion. And so I was talking, I was talking about, um, oh gosh, how Nintendo likes to drop one, um, usually one big title a year ahead of time. Everything else, they like to keep it very much in the present. So the everything that we're going to get on Tuesday, I have to imagine it'll be games that are coming out either in the summer and some of them leading into the fall. Of course, Mario Odyssey, of course, Fire Emblem Warriors, you know, your later games, those big titles getting release dates and such. Sup, bro, just chill, man, taking a night of rest and relaxation. Dude, sometimes you need those, man. I hear you. I hear you on it. <laughs> But, but yeah, I think everything we're going to get is going to stay within 2017, minus my wild prediction for a Metroid Prime game and a Metroid 2.5D game for the 3DS. 
So if we get a Metroid Switch and we get a Metroid 3DS or one or the other, I will be thoroughly excited. You will see me just like start throwing chairs left and right. I'll just, I'm just, I'll, I will get up and throw a chair if they announce a Metroid game. Calling it right now. Calling it right now. <laughs> Let's go. Chat flies fast. Oh my goodness. All right. I'm going to drop back in and see how you guys are doing here. For those of you who might not know this format, this is the After Work Show. Uh, this is our weekly Nintendo news related show. And I just sit here talking about things happening with Nintendo. Some news. We talked about the Nintendo Online Service Program earlier. Watched a couple trailers of some new stuff that Atlas dropped. And this is our E3 prediction show. This So this is a little bit out of our normal format. But I really wanted to get these out before like news just starts to leak wildly days before which last year was really bad like the entire show got leaked down to like bullet points of times that were happening for certain conferences and what they were gonna say it was like are you kidding me this is ridiculous oh man but yeah so I figured let's have some fun with this. I made some wild predictions. I made some safe bets and I made some, hey, this could potentially happen. I'm still, I'm still rooting for that SNES classic to come out, man. I think that's going to happen. Oh man. No more Skyrim. It's too much. There's never too much, Ryan. There's never too much. Will I personally pick up Skyrim? I don't think so. I'm, I, it's, uh, I've played Elder Scrolls games. They're not for me. <laughs> I feel like if I do get into them, I will. it'll be the only game I play for the rest of my life. I will spend an eternity on those games. Much like Dragon Dragon Age. I, play, I picked up Dragon Age Inquisition when it came out. And tell me how I spent eight hours on one village. I didn't... I, I did nothing story related. I mean, I finished all the missions in that one village. Mind you, one village is like this iPhone on a map that is the size of this room. So think about that scale. That is absurd. That is insane. I had fun with it, but I was like, man, I'll be here forever playing this game. I'll still be playing this game and I would have never started a YouTube channel. <laughs> that's what would have happened that's what would have happened <laughs> oh man so i guess i shouldn't say it's not for me it's that i would have to be way too invested for time i don't have to play that game oh man kbop says dragon age is fun it was fun it was fun that was the first dragon age game i played inquisition it was cool i enjoyed it the eight hours that i played and i never went back <laughs> Oh, man. I wish Joe was wearing a Samus suit on the stream. Imagine I was Samus all along. It wasn't Samus Aron, the chick. It was just me inside the suit. Oh, man. Oh, yeah. I want Devil May Cry 6. Would be so good. Bayonetta is not... You take that back, Ryan. You take that back. Bayonetta is not boring. Bayonetta is not boring. With your Z's. You take your Z's. You take them out of here, Ryan. You get out of here. Ugh. Sorry. I take that back. I love you. Don't go. Don't go. Please. <laughs> oh, man. It's not Monster Hunter du Double Cross. It's Monster Hunter Generation Season 2. Oh, that's... Yes, that's right. That's what they named it for here, right? For the U.S. <laughs> but, yeah, they didn't even give a release date for the U.S. either. So it'll be it'll be a bit before we get that game. That'll probably happen next year. Why does this chat keep going down? Jeez. All right. Guys, thank you so much for tuning in tonight. This is a nice nice episode of the Afterwork show. Look at that. We made an hour. I said we weren't we probably wouldn't make the hour for the show and we somehow managed to stretch my predictions across whole show so guys those of you who don't know once again this is the after work show every week we bring to you nintendo related news uh we laugh we cry we complain sometimes we want metroid games sometimes hey smash brothers would be great at some point but it's 
too soon right now. It's too soon. So I'm going to leave you here, guys. Normally, we end the show with a your moment of Jawsome, which is kind of like the Jon Stewart Daily Show moment of Zen. But I, I didn't have one for you today because... I was. I think this whole E3 predictions thing was your moment of Jawsome. I think we're going to see some amazing things. I will be out there. Um, I downloaded the IRL TV app so that way I can try to stream while I'm there so you guys can kind of see what's going on at the show floor. If I get reception in in the uh in the actual la convention center um we'll do some streams while i'm out there we'll definitely be streaming on tuesday the morning of the actual uh nintendo uh nintendo spotlight and then i'll head out there to actually see what's going on and maybe get to play a game or two after waiting online for three four hours maybe fingers crossed and also um Supposed to be supposed to be uh, meeting up with Seek and Deadeye, maybe L1, uh, and maybe Hunter at some point too. So there's probably going to be some sort of recorded content that one of us can give to you. Um, we'll find out when we get there <laughs> how that's going to work. And uh, I fly out Saturday, so no streams this weekend. Remember, just letting you guys know now. I'll probably set up some VOD casts for you guys. Um, I'll throw, I'll ask you guys in the Discord. I'll pick, I'll pick a few games that I have uploaded here on Twitch, and we'll see which one uh, is the most popular vote. And I'll have that full series be the vodcast for the weekend. Um, we'll we'll pick like one or two games, and we'll just, I'll just have them all ready to go entire series and it'll play throughout the weekend uh unless of course i surprise you guys with some sort of stream but i highly doubt that that will be the case because i have a lot going on while i'm there <laughs> um and uh hoping to have hoping to have fun with this guys so um once i know what's going to be on the show floor i'll reach out to you guys whether it's twitter whether it's whether it's discord and I want to, um, I want to know like what you guys want to see me play out there or get my impressions on as well. So once I, once, you know, that first day goes through, goes by and I kind of have an idea of what's going to be there, I'll let you guys know. And I'll say, Hey, if there's anything I can record or talk to you guys about, I'll let you guys know the games and I'll then work on the next day trying to get to play those games so we could talk about them. Tomorrow I'll make a double storage for my phone. My battery increase. Damn. You have life forever, ever. Forever, ever. Damn. Boom. Klee, thank you for the host as well. I didn't... How did I not catch that? Guys. Draco, thank you for the host as well. Jeez. Missing this. So, guys. Once again, we're closing out. I'm going to host the Bobo that is the Chet after this. So, if you want to stick around, he is an awesome streamer. In his words, he's a dreamer, he's a memer, he's a streamer, he's a speedrunner, and uh, he plays, uh, he's been playing Final Fantasy VII, he was speedrunning that yesterday, he also got like a personal best, he beat the game in like three and a half hours, which is nuts, and and that was after like some mistakes that he had made <laughs> too, <laughs> which is insane, so we're gonna, we're gonna see what he's speedrunning tonight, and uh, we'll host him. Fun times from the after work crew is the message that we want to send to this raid. So I'm out of here, guys. I'm going to be uh, posting this highlight over to YouTube immediately this time. I mean it. And I'll catch you all in the next stream where I will be redeeming all the leftover Revlo points. That'll be this Friday for like an hour. Um, there's so many push-ups on there. I'm going to die. I, I, I will literally die on this stream on Friday and won't be able to make it to LA because of all the push-ups that you guys have redeemed and all the other <laughs> random stuff that is happening. So Revlo Redemption stream on Friday and then we will retire Revlo points until I can come up with something more creative. So guys, I will see you next time. If you enjoyed what you saw here, consider following, share it with your friends, let them know what I do here. I talk about video games after work. I also play video games after work. We're working on Fire Emblem Echoes, making our way through that game. We're close. We're close to beating the game. We're probably about, you know, another 10 hours in. I say that, but we've spent 20 hours on the game already. 22 hours to be exact. So I'll catch you guys next time. Take care. Love y'all.